Hi everyone. Already in the first week of this course, we saw that in the local model, it is possible to color a directed cycle with three colors in log star many rounds. We can start with the unicolored files, which form a coloring with a polynomial number of colors. And then we repeatedly reduce the number of colors. In one round, we can reduce the number of colors from 2 to the power of k colors to only 2 times k colors. And if you repeat this for log star many times, the number of colors will be a small constant. But is this the best that we can do? For example, could there be a clever way to find a tree coloring in constant time, independent of the number of nodes in the network? This week, we will see that the answer is no, and we will use round elimination to show that. In a sense, we will show almost the exact opposite of what we saw in the first week. In the first week, we saw that if you can find a coloring with 2 to the power of k colors in t-1 rounds, then you can find a coloring with two times k colors in t rounds. Now, using round elimination, we can work backwards. We just lose a factor of two here. Basically, we show that if you can find a coloring with k colors in t rounds, then you can also find a coloring with two to the power of k colors in t minus one rounds. And now, the high-level idea is this. We start with some hypothetical algorithm that finds a proper tree coloring in t rounds, where t is much less than log star. Then we repeat round elimination for t times, and we get an algorithm that finds a c coloring in zero rounds. Here c is, roughly speaking, a power tower of height t, and if t is much less than log star, then c will be much less than n. Notice that this is a non-trivial coloring. For example, unique identifiers won't give such a coloring. So we can show that this isn't possible in zero rounds. So we have a contradiction and conclude that tree coloring cannot be done in less than log star many rounds. Well, that's the idea at least. Too bad we can't do it directly like this. The way we described round elimination in the previous weeks, it can only be applied in the PN model. We can't do round elimination in the local model. And there is a good reason for that. Round elimination heavily relies on independence. You consider all possible inputs here, and all possible inputs here, and conclude that also all possible combinations of these inputs are possible. But if you have unique identifiers, this no longer holds. Identifier 1 might be here, or here, but not in both places simultaneously. So we can't directly do round elimination in the local model. We have to get there indirectly. We'll first consider randomized algorithms in the PN model. In the lecture notes, we will see how to do round elimination for randomized PN algorithms. We will need to be a bit more careful a randomized algorithm A0 for solving problem X0 still implies a randomized algorithm A1 that solves X1 one round faster. But we lost something. The probability that A1 fails will be somewhat higher than the probability that A0 fails. Fortunately, it isn't too bad in our application. 
we can still conclude that if we had a randomized algorithm that finds a tree coloring in less than log star time and works with high probability, then we will get a randomized algorithm that finds a coloring with less than n colors in zero rounds and still has got a pretty good success probability. So good that we can rule out the existence of such algorithms. So we have now a negative result for tree coloring in the randomized PN model. But we wanted to understand it in the local model. Well, if you had a fast randomized algorithm A for the local model that you would like to run in the PN model, you could first pick large enough random labels and use them as unique identifiers. So you could simulate A in the randomized PN model. And you would get an equally fast randomized PN algorithm this way with almost the same success probability. And we concluded that randomized PN algorithms can't run in sub log star time, so the same has to hold for randomized local algorithms too. And now we have already done. Deterministic local algorithms are just a special case of randomized local algorithms, so they can't find coloring in sub log star time either. So this is the high level plan that we are following this week. There are fairly many technicalities we need to worry about. But the good news is that once you learn to use these tools, you can apply the same ideas in the study of many other problems. First, use round elimination to prove a negative result in the deterministic PN model. Then, take into account probabilities to prove the same result for randomized PN algorithms. And then you can easily conclude that the same result also holds for the local model, both for randomized and deterministic algorithms.